My final thoughts, real quick, how to heal a broken heart. This is for somebody in the room, that's why I'm led to do it. How to heal a broken heart. Number one, be honest. In order to have a heart of flesh that's healed of God, you have to be honest. We have lied to ourselves for too long. We have to be honest with what's in our hearts. You got to go to God with those ugly cries and be like, God, look, I don't want this lying in my heart anymore. I'm tired of thinking this about my mom. I'm tired of thinking this about my dad. I'm tired of thinking this about my ex. I'm tired of thinking about this and this and this and this. I got to be honest because some of us, we fake it and we wonder why we never make it. You heard of fake it till you make it. Now, some of us are faking it and we'll never make it. We'll never get to that place of fully being healed. Number one, you got to be honest. Number two, you got to seek help. You can't just be honest. You got to seek help. You got to say, no, God, I'm seeking you for help. I'm honest, but now I'm seeking for help. How bad do you want to be healed? It's predicated on your seeking. If you want to be set free, you got to seek the one that will free you. And say, God, how is this going to, how are you going to help me? After you're honest and you have sought help, your help won't continue until you remove hindrances. You got to remove those things that are hindering you in order for you to be helped. Because we can be honest all day, but if we don't want to put the work in, we'll never be healed. And some of us are holding on to things that are hindering us. You got to say, I'm removing these hindrances as I'm being healed. The, when you're in the surgery room, is your mom in there? Is your dad in there? Is little boo boo, little Ray Ray in there? Is your husband there, your wife? There ain't nobody in there but you, the doctor, and the nurse. The nurse is the Holy Ghost, the doctor is Jesus, and the operating room is the Father, His presence. You got to say, uh-uh, I got to move any and everything that ain't clean or sanitized as I'm being healed in his life. Because if I have anything that's not sanitary, it's going to lead to an infection. And our hearts have been infected for too long because we're allowing too many people in the operating room. And God's been trying to pull you into isolation, but you love the wrong community too much. The community of <clears throat> TV, radio, people. You got to say, no, 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 you're talking. Listen, if you really want to be healed from something, you got to remove everyone who has negative words in their mouths. You need people around you who have enough self-control and discernment to not be infectious. Because anything that touches you as you're going through transition will either make you or break you. You got to be honest. You got to seek help. You got to remove hindrances. And you actually next have to embrace the healing. Embracing healing means embracing the healing process. When you break an ankle, Jacob, when we break an ankle, there's a process by which that ankle gets healed. All right? In fitness, if you have a sore muscle, if you pull a muscle, if you, there's a certain process for that thing to be healed. Some of us think we're supposed to be healed in a day, in a night, in a twinkle of an eye, we're supposed to be healed. We do this. We expect that we be in our prayers. I'm going to be healed. And God's saying, you want me in a moment to heal you. But sometimes your healing happens after the process. Because when you sit in the process, what did Kobe say to the, what was the uh, Celtic that got hurt? Gordon, Gordon Hayward. Kobe said something very profound. He said, embrace every stage in this healing process or journey because you will learn so much about the muscles and the things you took for granted. We don't want to be injured, but sometimes injury shows us things about ourselves that as we're getting healed in this area, me being healed here opens the doors for me to be healed in other areas. So you have to embrace how God wants to heal you and God doesn't always heal the same way. You just got to say, Father, however you want to heal me, I'm going to embrace it. After you have been healed, you got to pursue holiness now. Not perfection, but progression. Uh-uh. You got to have the courage of your convictions to go to that man and say, we can no longer be in a relationship no more. 
you gotta look at that girl in the eye and you know you done lied to her and said she was the one. You gotta be like, girl, I will, you gotta man up and be like, I was wrong, but I have to let you go. Friends, I know you ain't gonna feel, you ain't gonna like this, but I can't. Because I was once hurt, but now I'm healed. And our healing has a way of making you never want, boy, you get a bad stomach virus. Get, boy, I had, boy, I had pink eye last year. I thought I was gonna leave here. Pink eye went from this side to this side. I had to take off work. Nobody wanted to hug me. Nobody wanted to love me, nothing, because they were scared. Oh, man, you see my, where my key? My key's in the car. Then we get a little hand sanitizer thing, hook up to my keys. You know, CMS got the lanyards. As soon as the kid touched me. <laughs> Mm -mm, mm -mm. I love you, but I don't want to go back there no more. As soon as I feel a throat scratch, I'm getting lemon, I'm getting turmeric, I'm getting, <clears throat> I got black seed oil. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't go back. Them teachers warned me when I first came to the school. They was like, yo, bro, you're going to get two of the worst sicknesses of your life. I said, nah, I'm a man of God. That pink eye hit me and that stomach virus hit me. I said, Lord, you do your part. And this 99.9% .9 killing of germs is going to do his part. <laughs> I love them, but I'm sanitized because I never, I don't, I don't want to go back. Oh, and you got to look at that in your life like, no, I don't want to always have to touch you and then sanitize. I don't always want, no, no, I just don't want you even to be here. And then, you know, say this to him, it's not you, it's me. And that's real. It's not you anymore because my relationship with you was your selfishness. I sacrificed for you. And I lost territory, I lost time, I lost treasures. It's not you no more, it's me. Self-care and selfishness are two totally different things. You can't take care of others, you can't take care of yourself. People be asking for my time, I'm like, you should have got my time when I had the time. It's about me now. Because if you always give your time to people, they're prospering while you have nothing to show for it. Next, after you've done it, now you can help others. You can't help nobody if you're not healed. Hurt people, hurt people. Healed people, heal people. If you want to be a healer, be healed first. That's my time. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate your support. Feel free to share this video. Get it out to as many people as possible. Thank you so much for watching this video.